that saying or song or whatever, a house is not a home? Yeah, well, I'm beginning to see the truth in it because my house, where I've lived my whole life, sure doesn't feel like home anymore. I don't think our house feels that different at all. I mean, sure, it's a little emptier, but it's not so different. Yeah, well, I'm not happy, Eleanor. And you know what mom always says? Know, know your, your own, own happiness. happiness. But sulking isn't going to change anything. We have to move forward. I'm not sulking, Ellie. Don't call me Ellie. I'm expressing the tragedy that is our young lives. Homeless. Orphaned. Ladies and gentlemen, Marianne Dashwood. I'm Eleanor Dashwood, and this is what I live with every day. can't even begin to describe. If we're going to be making this diary to explain our situation, then we should, you know, explain the situation. Yeah, well, if I'm going to continue to broadcast my life to the entire world, my hair is at least going to look decent. Okay. Well then, that leaves me to explain. Unfortunately, our mother's not much better than she is. They both just kind of mope around all the time. You see, our father died of cancer a month ago. I guess even though we knew it was coming, it still kind of hurts. I miss him every day, but it's okay. Or at least it will be. Anyways, our father was really into male lineage. He was Jonathan Dashwood the third, and his son, my half-brother, was Jonathan Dashwood the fourth. So in his will, dad left most of our money and our house to John. Dad made John promise that we'd still have the right to our house and that a large percentage of his inheritance was to be given to us, but it didn't exactly work out that way. You see, he's a selfish pig. It's more that John is an okay guy, but perhaps if he married a more amiable woman, he'd be better company. She's a gold digger. Mary Ann! You know it's true. You know that she's the reason why we lost everything, why we're visitors in our own damn home. Maybe we should show them what you mean. Let me fix this. There you go. You know, Jonathan, your dead father can't really dictate how you spend your inheritance. By giving it away to those women, you'd be robbing your child. But Fanny Love... I'd be taking from my sister. But you're not really related to the daughters at all. You would allow me and your son, our little Harry, to live in poverty? While those classless women aren't even related to you? Why, I bet they don't even know the difference between a salad fork and a dessert fork. <laughs> <laughs> my father's last request to me was that I take care of his wife and daughters. His last request, when he was surely out of it, for no sane father would, own, would ever ask of his son to give away more than half his fortune. Especially when that fortune would otherwise be used to care for a loving wife and child. <laughs> he never actually told me the amount I had to give to them. He only said I should allow for them to live comfortably. But surely they can live comfortably without that grand estate where they live now. It would be much more suited for an actual family, such as our own. I suppose so. Remember, once you give away your money, it's gone. And those girls can always find a kind, loving, warm-hearted, handsome husband like I did. <laughs> they'll be provided for. And once they're married, they'll have no need for the money you've given them. And you will have robbed your own child for nothing. <laughs> I suppose... If I guarantee them comfortable housing, I will have fulfilled my duty. And how grateful they'll be for your generosity. Why, they'd be ignorant not to see you have acted just as generously as a real brother might have. Hmm. So, Fanny and Jonathan are moving in, and we're moving out. Our moments here are precious, for only God knows where we'll live. Jonathan could send us anywhere he'd like at any minute. 